Yes, this is Vincent van Gogh, the potato eaters. What happened to the bright colors? What happened to the starry night? Just look at these pictures for a moment while I'm reading you this quote from St. Peter Julian Amad, the founder of the Blessed Sacrament Fathers. He said, Happy the soul that knows how to find Jesus in the Eucharist and the Eucharist in all things. And I can hear you say, what does that have to do with the Eucharist? Is a group of peasants, a peasant family, having an evening meal of potatoes? What does that have to do with the Eucharist? Let's first have a look at the painting itself and then I'll get back to the Eucharist later on. He painted this, the potato eaters, in 1885, the year before he went to Paris, that is, before he encountered the Impressionist and literally changed his palette to the bright colors that we see in the starry night. Secondly, he also very impressed with the work of Millet, who started painting peasants. Vincent said to his brother that he wanted to depict peasants as they really were. He deliberately chose coarse and ugly models, peasant models, thinking that they would be natural and unspoiled in his finished work. In a letter to his sister Wilhelmina, which he wrote two years later from Paris, it is quite clear that Van Gogh still considered the potato eaters his most successful painting. This is what he wrote. What I think about my own work is that the painting of the peasants eating potatoes that I did in Newnan is after all the best thing I did. Interestingly enough, later on, he was very dissatisfied with the result of the starry night. Many commentators in reflecting on this painting, they speak about the deep affinity and solidarity that Vincent van Gogh had with the poor, whose lives like his own were burdened with care. And I agree with that. He found in their common meal the occasion which their humanity and moral beauty are struggling revealed. Their plea then has a close community based upon work and the sharing of the fruits of their work. And I totally agree with the social aspect of this painting, but I also see a very deep religious Eucharistic aspect of it. The painting depicts a poor, dark, low-ceilinged cottage with five people gathered around the table. There is a man and a woman on the left-hand side there is a man and a woman on the right hand side and then there is a young girl with her back to us. Let's start with a couple on the left hand side. She is cutting up potatoes. She is looking intently into him but he seems to be looking out towards the young girl on his right hand side. On the left hand side instead we see another couple. She is pouring what it seems to be a very dark, rich coffee. And the man he seems to be offering her the cup. In the gestures of these people gathered around the table, we see echo of the Eucharist. When we bring the gifts to the altar, we say, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this bread and wife to offer fruit of the earth, but work of human hands. This is what these people are doing. The potatoes that they are cutting up, the coffee that they are about to drink, is the fruit of their labor, which they are offering to each other in a Eucharistic gesture. Because in the Eucharist way, Jesus is saying to us, this is my body for you. This is my blood for you. And that's what they are doing to each other. Here it is. I give myself to you in these potatoes. They are the fruit of my labor. I give you part of my life for you. What happened many, many years ago 
at the Last Supper and on Mount Calvary at the death of Jesus, it becomes a reality for us, not only when we celebrate Eucharist, but also when we give of ourselves to another in love. Can you see why Vincent has put a picture of the crucifixion just behind on the wall there and the clock next to it? What happened many years ago becomes a reality now. This is my body for you. This is my blood poured out for you. Or, as St. Peter Julian Amos said, happy the soul that knows how to find Jesus in the Eucharist and the Eucharist in all things, especially when we share the fruit of our labors, the work of our human hands. Vincent van Gogh is not just painting an ordinary meal. This is a Eucharistic meal of five people gathered around the table. The table becomes their altar in which they give of themselves to each other. And the whole room lit for one single source of light, a lamp, like in the Eucharist. We pray, may the Holy Spirit descend upon these gifts that they may become the body and blood of Christ. And later on, we pray, may the Holy Spirit descend upon us that we might become one body, one spirit in Christ. And who is it that can turn us from individual into one body, one spirit in Christ? And here we come to the young woman with her back to us. Did you notice there is like a halo coming out around her body? Is Vincent van Gogh telling us that this person here, the back to us, is Jesus Christ himself, who is present in the grace sacrament of the Eucharist? Is Jesus Christ himself, who is present in our homes, especially when we gather for a meal? Did you notice how the couple on the left hand side there is a being coming down in between them, but the action of giving themselves to each other breaks down the barrier. The same with the couple on the right. Look at that, the wall is coming up between them. What is it that can break down the division? It is the man reaching out and offering the cup of drink, the cup of coffee to the woman next to him. Vincent wrote to his brother telling him that he had been dissatisfied with the flesh tones he first used to paint the heads of the peasants in the painting. And so he repainted them so that they were the color of a really dusty potato. What a wonderful reflection to conclude. We who gather around the Eucharist and eat the body and blood of Christ will truly become what we eat. We become the body and blood of Christ, not just at the Eucharist, but in our daily life. That's why at the end of the Eucharist, the priest tells us, go now and glorify the Lord by your life. And paraphrasing the quote from St. Peter Julian Amad, with which I started, happy are you that knows how to find Jesus in the Eucharist and the Eucharist in all things. Thank you. Bye now.